Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up automatic cloud saving for your favorite emulators on your Android handheld gaming devices. Let's start off with a demonstration so you can get a good idea of how this works and if it's something you want to spend the time to set up. On my desk I have my Ambernic RG353V, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, and a Samsung Galaxy Tab S7. I just recently reviewed the RG353V, so check out that video to see my thoughts and I'll have an upcoming video on the Samsung S23 Ultra as well as the Game Vice Flex that I use as a controller for retro gaming. I actually use all three of these devices in different scenarios to play retro games on and so being able to quickly continue where I left off on another device is a key feature for me. As you can see, I'm carrying on exactly where I left off. For fun, here's my Tab S7 continuing on, and I can keep going Inception style, but you get the point. Let me show you how to set this up with automatic uploading and downloading. I'm going to show you the steps for RetroArch, but you can replicate them for any emulator. I'll have a list of emulators and their save paths at the end of this video, as well as which ones don't work with this method. There's a free option called Folder Sync, and a free but needs paid option to be useful called Auto Sync. And I leave the choice up to you. I don't get commission or revenue from either app either way. Both will work the same way, with my personal preference being AutoSync. Now, let's look at the free option, which is Folder Sync first. Install and open the app, agree to the terms, and then grant permissions for files and battery optimization. Location isn't needed, and notifications is your preference, but I suggest enabling them. Click Finish, and now we're at the main screen. Take a look at the bottom right, let's create a folder pair. Let's name the sync RetroArc Saves. Leave Sync Engine on normal and Sync Type as two-way so that saves can be downloaded and uploaded. For left account, let's select Folder and browse to your RetroArc Saves folder, which the default location is located here on a normal Android device. For the right account, let's select SD Card and click Add Account. I'm going to do Google Drive here for this video, but you can use a different cloud option if you want. After connecting to your cloud service, go back, select SD card again, and change it to your cloud service. Let's click Select Folder and create a folder that you want saves to be put in. I already have one created, so I'm going to use that. Now click Save. Perfect, so now we have Sync set up, and if you want it to be a manual process, you can stop now. But if you're here, I'm assuming you want automatic, like I use, so let's continue. Let's click the Scheduling tab and enable Scheduled Sync. Now, you can select if you want it to only sync while charging and how often. Personally, I like to enable that option and set my interval to one hour. What this means is every hour it's going to check if your device is charging and if so, it'll sync. Let's go to the Sync Options tab now as I want to point out something important. First, select Sync Deletions. Now, what happens if you're playing a game on one device, save, pick up another device and start playing that same game and save without syncing first. Well, you're going to have a conflict, two different saves. This last option here is your decision on how to manage that. With this app, I'd personally select Overwrite Oldest, as that makes most sense to me, but it's your choice on which option works for you. Now, let's pop over to the Connection tab, and if you're someone with a low data cap, you'll want to select the Use Wi-Fi option here so that your saves sync only when connected to Wi-Fi. Lastly, the notification tab, and I'd recommend checking all three so you can get notified on sync progress and if any issues occur, but it's up to you. Select the first option in this pop-up so it respects your decision to use Wi-Fi for syncing. And that's it for the free Folder Sync app. Follow these same steps again to set up syncing on any other folders like save states for RetroArch or any other emulators. Lastly, once you're done doing all of that on one device, do all of it again on your second, or third, or fourth, or hundredth device, and now you'll have automatic cloud sync set up. I mentioned it before, I'll say it again, I do have a list of emulators and their save paths at the end of this video. Now let's talk about the paid option, and the one that I personally use. This option has a cost of $5 USD, which is the pro tier offering. Continue watching to see if the differences are worth it to you. Now, the price is technically optional, and can be used free, However, there's a limit of only one folder pair and 10 megabytes per file with the free version. And given RetroArch alone needs two folders to be synced for saves and states, I find the free option to be a bit limiting. So for me, the pro version is worth it. 
Ultimate isn't needed, so don't worry about that unless those options look useful to you or you want to support the developer. Developers, 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 developers. Install and open the AutoSync for Google Drive app or whatever cloud service you chose. It's actually named DriveSync in the app folder for Google Drive. Allow notifications. Agree to the terms. Connect to your cloud service. Click choose what to sync. Then let me create my own folder pair. Give this sync a name if you want. Let's call it RetroArch Saves. Now select the remote folder. And same as before, create or select a folder you want to use for your save syncs. As you can see, I already have mine created. And again, for local, navigate to the RetroArch folder, saves folder, and select. Leave every other option as default, scroll up, and select save. Again, if you want to manually sync your saves, you're all set here. But again, if you're watching this video, you likely want automatic, so let's head to the three dots in the top right and select settings. Go to synchronization, scroll down to the automatic background sync area, and let's select to sync only while the device is charging and an interval of one hour. You can scroll down more if you want to change any Wi-Fi settings. Now, go back to the settings menu and let's make sure we turn off battery optimization. Mine is already off as you can see here. Every device will be different for this step. This is just how mine looks. If you haven't already, I'd purchase the pro version now, but again, it's up to you. Now, how does this app handle conflicts? Take a look at the screen, specifically the Batman the Animated Series save file. This is in Google Drive. If we use our previous example of playing the same game on two devices and saving without syncing, this app will create a second file and edit the file name to include the words conflict and a timestamp. All you have to do then is head to that file in your cloud service and delete the one you don't want. You might need to rename if the one you don't want is the newest one that you just synced, like you can see here. And that's it for the paid autosync app. Follow these same steps again to set up syncing on any other folders, like save states for RetroArch or any other emulators. And again, like before, once you're done doing all of that on your one device, do all of this again on your second device, and now you'll have automatic cloud syncing set up. Also, let's talk about what emulators do and don't work for this setup. Here's what I found with the emulators I use. I'll also list the default folders where saves are located for them on screen to help you out. RetroArch and Citra both work perfectly. M64 Plus FZ, Drastic, PPSSPP both work perfectly as well as long as you selected the settings to use internal storage for them. If not, go to these spots on screen to change it. Just make sure you back up your data in all three cases. PPSSPP and M64 Plus FZ do not move your data over, but Drastic does. Just be safe. Dolphin Official unfortunately does not work for restoring due to the fact that Dolphin stores saves in the scoped storage area, which is inaccessible by apps and you can't change the setting, but you can use it to upload. In the apps that we set up, when setting up that folder, use the upload only method instead of two-way if you want this functionality. DuckStation and Aether SX2 have not worked for me, and I assume it's because you need to import memory cards and cannot just overwrite them. I've lost a lot of saves trying this, so learn from my mistakes. Those are the popular emulators that I personally use. As long as you know where the emulator saves your games, you can do this process with any of them. You can do the same thing with your BIOS folder, or even ROMs too. One key thing to point out is that for this automatic cloud saving to work, you'll need the same ROM for each device that you're loading into. Also, because everything is being uploaded to a cloud service, you're not limited to just Android devices to continue your games. I play on my Windows PC as well, using all the same saves. And that's it for this one. Hope you liked the video, and hope you all have a good one.